Further debate? Recognize the member for Beaches East York. Madam Speaker, what a beautiful sight to see a woman in that chair, I will just say. I rise today and am honoured to give my inaugural speech in this revered and historic chamber amongst individuals, past and present, who have contributed to the democracy of our province. I'm so proud to be here amongst people from yesterday to today that contributed to democracy in the province. The land where I live and work is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples, and is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. I would like to begin with a colossal thank you to Beaches East York residents for putting their faith in me June 2, 2022. I am grateful and humbled in these increasingly divisive and challenging times where many are skeptical of both politics and politicians. I am absolutely determined to make a difference in the Ontario Legislature, and I will proudly address the issues that matter day in and day out. If you have ever been to my neck of the woods, I would be more than happy to provide a guided scenic tour one day. Part of my riding is like a seaside resort. The beach or beaches, depending on who you speak to, is a stunning, serene urban sanctuary with clean, safe, swimmable beaches connected by a long, meandering boardwalk. With dogs matching the number of people, Summer months are filled with countless outdoor festivals, notably the world-renowned Beaches Jazz Festival, parades, and fireworks. Winter stations attracts people to the area in the colder months and celebrates the dark days of the season with colorful, creative, interactive art installations. Other lively areas of Beaches East York include quaint and connected Kingston Road Village, where small businesses are the backbone of the neighborhood. Gerard Street is akin to a grand boulevard with the streetcar running down the middle of the tree-lined streets, the patios with twinkly lights. The Danny, also known as the Danforth, is always hopping, especially now with the ca active TO cafes, bike lanes, and road murals. Europe should be jealous. Noon and night, Bangla Town is alive with bustling pedestrians, shopkeepers, families, laughter, conversations, and excitement. The area continues to grow and is truly the commercial, social, and cultural hub for the Bengali community. From the best cinnamon buns in the world at Courage Foods to the falafel sandwiches at Bodega Henriette, from the chai tea at Garora Restaurant to the delicious Ethiopian fare at Haru, served with the backdrop of jazz, and to that intoxicating smell since 1949 coming from Mondelez, formerly Peak Free and Factory, we have it all. But Madam Speaker, I may be painting a picturesque version of my home riding, but we in Beaches East York experience the very same issues province-wide. An affordability crisis, lack of housing, a hospital, our pride and joy, Michael Guerin, that suffers the same shortages and worker fatigue <clears throat> Sorry, seen in every facility. Schools that beg for revitalization and neighbours who are looking for answers. One of the main reasons I ran to become an MPP is to contribute to solutions. Change brings opportunity. There is no I in team, and wow, did I have a terrific campaign team. They never stop pounding the pavement, wrapping the doors, making the calls, and all the while having fun. Our campaign manager, marvelous Marietta, Mc or, marvelous Marietta Fox, thought our campaign with, about our campaign with every breath she took. There is nothing Marietta cannot do. Write speeches, design graphics, connect the constituent-style campaign offices. In fact, some people asked if our office was a new art gallery. I'm stopping there because I do not want you to steal her for your next election. <laughs> Our co-campaign manager, talented Tanvir Shawanaz, is a bundle of energy in the East End. This smiley guy has an uncanny way of connecting with everyone he meets and is an integral and admired leader in the Bangladeshi community and throughout Beaches East York. Again, he is not available for you in 2026. Our coordinator extraordinaire, effervescent Ellen uh, Pisani, is a master juggler with such key skills as volunteer recruitment, newsletter creation, and database coordination. She has steadfastly stood by me for the long haul since our lively days at Toronto City Hall and has never stopped caring for our community. Ellen is also off limits and already booked for 2026. My think tank, you know who you are, behind the scenes, was guiding us with sage advice and strong support. They were an absolute asset and gift. 
Also, I'm very appreciative for the encouragement from the leaders of both other levels of government in my riding. Our PLA President, Tom McGee, and his right arm, CFO Josh McCooch, were rock solid in their support, as were our incredible donors. One of the most exciting elements of our campaign was the amount of youth helping us. Working with them was like a surge of energy. I want to thank all my vivacious volunteers, seeing them show up on cold, wintry days in their Team Triple M toques to knock on doors with their frozen mitts warmed my heart. These superhumans added so much value and camaraderie that we were all sad after each canvassing shift ended. Our campaign was filled with carous carousing, chaos, and conviviality. It was actually the gregarious member for Guelph who first planted the real seed from my foray back into politics, so he is truly to blame for me being here. Growing up in a small town with parents who dragged my three brothers and I out volunteering every chance they could taught me a lot. I saw firsthand the huge benefits of giving back to your community. The more we give, the happier we feel, and that realization followed me my whole life. When my kids were small, I was rallying neighborhoods and reinvigorating neighborhoods. I actually chose to ch raise my family in Beaches East York because it reminded me of the small town I grew up in. After much volunteering, community building, and environmental activism, I ran for Toronto City Council in 2010 and won because people were ready for change. I served eight years, as I strongly believe in term limits. At City Hall, I work across party lines to get things done. I don't care where the good ideas come from, I just, as long as they just come. I worked with many people in this chamber, including the Premier, and I look forward to continuing to work collaboratively with everyone here to help build a better and dramatically more sustainable Ontario. I have been referred to as the accidental politician on many occasions. My father was mayor of Collingwood when I was growing up, a pretty embarrassing thing when you're a teenager, to say the least. At that point, I vowed I would never go into politics. Was I ever wrong thinking politics was boring? I am proud of my track record at City Hall of spearheading the Laneway Suites game-changing planning policy that helps deal with our housing crisis by allowing people to age in place and adds to our rental stock. Transform TO, the city's first climate adaptation and mitigation plan, was a crusade of mine. I worked hard to get a unanimous vote, a rare feat, at council. And this time around, when my family found out I was jumping back into politics, they knew what they were in for. We all know how taxing and tough this world can be for our uh, this wild world can be for our loved ones. In 2010, when my son Liam found out my McMahon can election signs were going up at homes near his new school, he was mortified. Liam has certainly changed his tune. Recently graduating from political science degree with, at McGill University, he's a strong supporter of my crusades and was instrumental in securing votes at the door with his incredible wit, charisma, and smarts. He helped me prep for debates and advised me to stop saying schmooze, advice I did not heed. For eight years, my daughter, Rebecca, who's right here in the chamber. Hello, Rebecca. <laughs> I witnessed firsthand the struggles I went through dealing with controversial development applications. Could Lick's hamburger spot turning into a six-story condo have been a contributing factor to her decision to study urban planning at UBC? Maybe. This election, Becca listened to Beaches East Yorkers while phone banking in at the door and brought out friends with no political experience, and they'll probably write a screenplay about what they heard at the door. My husband, Jim, in the chamber as well, is my rock. I would not be able to enter public service without him having my back. He is a behind-the-scenes guy who puts wind in my sail, uh, sails on a daily basis. He actually deserves the Order of Ontario. When, my father, when I told my father I wanted to run for office, he tried to talk me out of it. Ron Emo was town council and mayor for Collingwood. He too believed in term limits and has found endless ways to give back outside of town hall, even now at 85. He has received the Order of Collingwood the Companion Order, and has a road named after him, which he seriously wants to turn into a toll road, as it is en route to the Collingwood Brewery. Collingwood is a much better town because of my dad. To thine own self be true and keep your feet on the ground remain his key messaging to me. I finally have to be nice and thank my three brothers. I realize that after years of teasing and tormenting each other growing up, they are the reason I have the thickest skin anyone could ever have. They also stepped up to help me run especially for MPP. My eldest brother, Michael, with our identical upbeat personalities, actually surprised me when he flew in from Vancouver before E-Day. He is such a bundle of positivity and exuberance that he should come with a safety warning. Stephen is a community leader in his own right. He is exceptionally observant with a keen eye for details and logistics. 
And my youngest brother, Timothy, was the one my father was grooming for politics. We sometimes call him Socrates, as he has an uncanny ability to strategize, calm the waters, and bring forth rational and reasonable advice. When I was little, I did not think I was lucky to have three brothers, but boy, do I feel like I won the lottery now. The true role model in my life is my mom, Gloria Emo. Quite frankly, she ran Collingwood in basically every organization, Meals on Wheels, Hospice, Katanoshi Sister City Association, which inspired me to move to Japan years later, and Kinets to spotlight some. All of this while tar working tirelessly as a nurse and raising four rambunctious children. Her zest for life was explosive. She was part of my 2010 campaign for City Hall, where despite not knowing anyone in Beaches East York, she managed to discover every Collingwoodian with a connection to my ward, convincing them to vote for me through her incredible charm. Glowy saw us victorious on election night, but tragically passed away a few months later of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. I miss her every day, but her spirit lives on in my children and in uh, me as I try to emulate her belief in public service. My family sponsored the nursing station in Campbell House Hospice in Collingwood in her memory, and I will definitely be crusading for more hospices all across Ontario for the next four years, as we all need a peaceful end-of-life journey. Fast forward to 2022, as election night drew to a close, I was met with two emotions, sense of gratitude and elation, and a vote of confidence for what was placed in me, but concern about the results. We as Liberals are a small but mighty team ready to take on what is necessary to make change happen in Ontario and serve the needs of our community. The, we will stand up for better health care, better education, more affordable housing, strong business recovery, all through an inclusive lens to ensure no one is left behind. The one reason I jumped back into politics is because of the climate emergency. Around the world, we are seeing the effects of climate change. This is the crisis of our lifetime. We have one chance to get it right. We can all work together to transition to a resilient province. We can build up the green economy by creating thousands of jobs for Ontarians in renewable energy, retrofits, uh, resilient infrastructure, and that will make us truly open for business. It can be done. Ontario is falling behind, and the key to successful climate future will be action. There's much climate despair, anxiety, especially amongst our youth, our kids, grandkids, nieces and nephews, and families and friends. They're looking to us for direction. They are looking to us to work together to get things done for the greater good. Change brings opportunity. Life doesn't get better by chance. It only gets better by change. Thank you. Arigatou gozaimashita. Merci.